video in the Earth topic and in this video we're looking at the Earth's structure. Now this is a pretty iconic picture. Okay, This was taken I think by um, Apollo 8, I think it's Apollo 8. As it came around the moon, as it came back from the back of the moon pointing towards Earth, it took this beautiful, beautiful photograph of the Earth. What it really emphasizes is actually our Earth is a very tiny planet compared to huge as of space. But what we're looking at today is what's it actually like on the inside? We're going to delve inside the Earth and see what it's made up of. Well, the Earth is almost a sphere. It's not a perfect sphere. It's not perfectly round, okay? But it's almost a sphere, and we can see here. We, if we could open it up, we could open it up like a, like a, like an egg. Looking inside of an egg, you see these different layers. You see them here? Now. We've got on the outside is the crust. Now this is a bit that we live on. This is a bit we're living. You see the oceans there and the land. And look at it. It's relatively thin and rocky. Imagine um, the peel on an apple. Well, that's not what it's like. That's the peel is like the thickness of the crust compared to the rest of the Earth. Then we've got what's called the mantle. The mantle is going towards the centre of the Earth. Okay, there is an inner and outer mantle. It's mostly solid, but we'll see later on in this video how it can actually move. But near the centre can flow very, very slowly. Now, right in the centre, we've got the core. Now, we think, we think, we don't know, no one's, we've never drilled down into the core. The furthest we've drilled is about, I don't know, less than 20 kilometres into the Earth's crust. So we don't know a great deal geologically about what's down here, but we think it's made from nickel, so nickel and iron. The outer core, because of the huge temperatures down there, okay, the outer core is actually liquid, so all the metals and rocks are melted from liquid, and the inner core is solid. Now you may think, hang about, if that the outer core is liquid, why isn't the inner core? Well, it's all to do with intense pressures that exist down there that force it to be solid. And as we said, it's the crust is where we live. Now, there's some interesting things about the crust we could consider. The Earth's crust and other part of the mantle are made of what are called tectonic plates. Now, you can see this, these um, lines here. These separate the plates. There's one plate here, there's a plate here, there's a plate there, here's a plate as well. So it's like there are cracks in the Earth's surface that fit together like a massive jigsaw. And they're called tectonic plates. Now the key thing about the plates is they float. They're actually moving. Not a lot. So don't need to panic about it. Perhaps a few millimeters or centimeters a year. They actually do move. And they float on top of the mantle. And they do move around. But as I said, Nothing to worry about because it's not that big, a few millimetres perhaps. So, the plates float, we said this bit and had that before. Now, do you remember when we talked about in the previous video convection currents? Remember that convection currents? It's a video not long ago. Now, you've got in the middle of the Earth here is the core. Now, we said the core is very, very, very hot. We're talking thousands of degrees Celsius. Okay. Intense heat in the Earth's core causes molten rock in the mantle to move. Do you remember about convection currents? Okay. Now convection currents, so it gets hot here, nearest the core, the, the rock gets hottest, it's liquid, so it starts to move up because it's less dense, goes towards the crust, there it cools down, becomes more dense, and so falls again. So you get these circulation or convection currents being set up within the Earth, and they are going to start moving the, the um the mantle and the currents move tectonic plates because the plates sit on top of the mantle if the mantle moves the plates will move now there are, that is a problem I said nothing to worry about but where tectonic plates meet volcanoes and earthquakes often happen see the ridges here that is where but look the plates move very slowly perhaps as I said a few millimeters and centimeters a year but over time imagine it moved you know a centimeter every year for a hundred years. That's a metre. Imagine, can you visualise a metre? That's quite a bit, isn't it? So they do move, and because of this movement, we often get volcanoes and earthquakes. Now, this is a really, really interesting map. This map shows location of volcanoes and earthquakes around the world. So wherever there is a dot, okay, that'll be a volcano or an earthquake. Now, can you see, they actually do follow certain lines. Let's go back to the slide. And they follow these areas here. Now this is one here. This is called a Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This one here is a Mid. Let's try to follow it on the next map. And there it is. 
This is a mid-Atlantic ridge. So here we have, beneath the surface of the sea, we have volcanoes and earthquakes happening. This is um, Europe, this is going down through to Asia, and you get volcanoes here and earthquakes. This is, now this is a very famous one, this is a, a tectonic plate joint here coming down the west coast of America. And this is California around here, so this must be what's called the San Andreas Fault. And we know that earthquakes happen here, like in San Francisco. Now this, you see this one here, this is a, a, like a, a circle. This is called the Pacific Ring of Fire. Because it's here you get many, many earthquakes and volcanoes. So, notice how the volcanoes and earthquake um, happenings line up where tectonic plates meet. OK, that's enough to start with about the Earth. Let's get some key words. So, core is the innermost part of the Earth. The mantle is a zone of hot rock in the interior of the Earth located between the outer crust and the core, molten core. Has the properties of a solid, although it can flow very, very slowly. As it does, as we said, it causes the moon or tectonic plates. So, copy these keywords onto your vocab sheet and make sure that you understand what they mean. Well, that's the end of this Key Stage 3 science video. Thanks ever so much for watching. I really do hope you like what you see. And if you do like what you see, why not visit my website at www.keystage3sciencecourses.com. There you'll find over 120 science videos you can subscribe to. So, once again, thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.